Hi guys, it's Joanna, and today's video is going to be a mega review of multiple different Asian sunscreens. I can't hold them all in my hand, so this is not all of them, <laughs> but it is going to be a long one, so I might suggest playing it at 1.5 speed, just, you know, a suggestion. Uh, also, if you do want to jump to the reviews, I will put the time right here so you can jump ahead to the reviews, but before I get into the reviews, I do want to mention a few things up front. So first of all, all the sunscreens today are going to be featuring chemical filters or organic filters. This is in contrast to mineral or physical filters like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. This has been a long requested video because I've made several other videos around other types of sunscreens, mineral sunscreens primarily, but I have long loved Asian chemical sunscreens. And in fact, in one of my earliest videos, I talk about my love for the Biore aqua rich watery essence, which is my first foray, which was my first foray into the Asian SPF world many, many years ago. I kind of stayed with this for a long time, but in recent years, I've kind of veered away from it. And so there are now, I've tried so many more and I'm super excited to kind of share these with you. They are overall just the most cosmetically elegant types of sunscreens on the market. I mean, far superior to American, kind of your traditional American sunscreens, and also to uh, many European sunscreens that I've tried anyway. So second, you know, as I mentioned, these are really cosmetically elegant and they're great for day-to-day -day use, but these should not be a substitute for some of your heavy duty sunscreens that you use when you're outdoors doing intense physical activity because none of these, at least that I, I know, are waterproof or sweatproof. And you know, really they're great just for kind of your day-to-day -day commuting, going to the office, etc. And, and again, you should wear sunscreen every single day, even if you don't think you're outdoors that much. Third, so like I mentioned, these are all chemical filters and they're all rated SPF 50 with PA++++, that's four pluses. So the PA represents the UVA protection and four is the maximum number. But if you read about the PA standards, it's a little bit imprecise in terms of how it's measured. So I will still talk about kind of the specific filters and all of the sunscreens that I review today. Fourth, I will be including in all of my reviews a little clip of me actually applying the sunscreen directly to my face and I apply it at the recommended kind of dosage to get the, the actual kind of efficacy stated on these labels. That is roughly for me a quarter teaspoon for my face and my neck. So it is quite a lot of sunscreen. I do also make a video about how much sunscreen you're supposed to use. So I'll link to that also down below. Finally, the last point I'll make before I jump into the bulk of this video is that all of these sunscreens I got from yesstyle.com who was kind enough to actually provide me a credit so I could get all of these for free. There was no obligation to review any of these positively or, or anything really other than to make a video and let you guys know how I came about these sunscreens. So thank you guys for watching me and giving me enough influence whereby companies like YesStyle are willing to give me stuff for free. Um, but also it is kind of good too because they've also given me a code logical Joe, which you can use in the rewards influencer box as you're checking out. Um, that provides you an extra 5% discount if you are a first time shopper or a 2% discount if you're not new to YesStyle. And this is in addition to any other codes that you wanna enter. So if you are a new shopper to YesStyle, you can actually use the code YesStyle for 10% off. So you can get an additional 5% off with the code Logical Joe. I will also say that YesStyle, I have been a long time shopper there myself. Their prices are, I found consistently lower than Amazon for many, many things, not always. So it is worth doing a price check. But the downside is, of course, that they do ship from Asia and often it's a lot longer of a wait time for your products than it would be for Amazon Prime. But that's the trade-off you make. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get into the reviews. I'm gonna be reviewing these in the order of least expensive to most expensive based on the current pricing on YesStyle.com. And I will say that on YesStyle, you'll often see for these products like on sale now, and there's a little, little clock indicating that the sale is gonna expire soon. In my experience, this has not been true. So I think it's actually just a ploy that YesStyle uses to try to get you to, to make your purchase. So first up is the Biore UV Kids Milk. This is SPF 50 PA++++ and it is $13 for roughly 90 milliliters of product. So this is about 15 cents a milliliter, which is the least expensive of everything today. So in terms of the filters, this one has octanoxate, Tinosorb S, Uvenol A+, and Uvenol T. These filters really do provide a broad spectrum of coverage. The key to call out is Tinosorb S, which goes up all the way to 400 nanometers, which is where kind of UVA taps out. Many other UVA filters don't go up quite that high. So Uvenol A+, for example, has a max absorption of 354 nanometers. The thing though is Tinosorb S, once you go over 370 nanometers, you do start to kind of go down exponentially by the time it gets to 400 nanometers. Nevertheless, like I said, all of these will be providing great kind of overall coverage for day-to-day -day use. 
Most importantly, these filters, particularly the Tinisorb and Juvenols, won't degrade and are quite stable versus some of the traditional filters that are allowed in American sunscreen. Both of these are not FDA approved currently. They are allowed in the EU and many Asian countries and other countries around the world. In terms of use, the texture of this one is very comparable in my mind to many common American chemical sunscreens. It is quite liquid upon initial dispense and initial use, but then goes into a kind of creamy texture on application. It doesn't feel great to be honest, even though I said creamy, because it does leave you feeling like you have significant residue remaining on your hands after application. In terms of absorption, it's okay, and there is an initial white cast, but this goes away after a couple of minutes. There's no scent, and it does leave a somewhat greasy finish, definitely not very matte. Um, the finish is also a little bit more tacky versus some of the other SPFs I'll be reviewing today. Overall, this one I would say is definitely not my fave, and I can see why you know it's marketed for a kid sunscreen because it is great if you have sensitive skin, but it does leave that greasy finish, which I don't love, and the feeling that you just really have to wash your hands kind of immediately after you apply this. So while it does offer some great protection, it's just not something that I would reach for regularly, and I'm glad to have tried it. Many of you recommended I try this when I was polling Instagram on which ones I should try, but I have to say if you love this one, keep watching because I think you'll find some other better things to try next. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you're missing out because I pulled my Instagram stories to ask them which ones I should try in addition to the ones I had already on my list. So a lot of these were thanks to my Instagram suggestions. So thank you guys. Okay, next up, the second least expensive is the Biore Aqua Rich Watery Essence. This is the classic, the original, my first foray into Asian SPFs. The formula I understand has changed over the years, so this one is different than the one I originally used. I honestly can't remember now how different or, or what ways they're different, but just FYI, this is the 2019 formula that I'm reviewing. So the SPF ingredients in here are octanoxate, Uvenol T, Uvenol A+, and Tinosorb S. So unsurprisingly, the filters in this one are the exact same as in the Biore UV Kids, just in different order. But overall though, from, a, from the perspective of protection, this one definitely does the job. For application, there is no white cast almost immediately and it, it really instantly goes translucent. However, even though there's no kind of whiteness as you're rubbing it in, um, when you're applying it, it does feel like it takes a long time for it to be absorbed into the skin. And as you're working it in, it just kind of feels like your hands are just sloshing a lot of product back and forth on top of your skin. There's definitely a slight greasy feel during the application. Um, and also alcohol is the second ingredient, so there's a noticeable alcoholic aroma and cooling effect when you're applying. I mean, this dissipates quite quickly and I didn't notice any kind of lasting dryness. And at least in this case, I didn't find it to be drying long-term. That said, you might have just, just you know, different opinion if you do have dry skin, just so FYI. The sun went away, where did the sun go? <laughs> All right, let's continue. The finish on the Biore Aqua Rich is a demi-matte finish. So it does feel lovely and there's a very slight, slight tackiness as you're touching it after it's kind of dried for a couple of minutes. Overall, I would say that this sunscreen is okay. It is, especially if you are only used to American sunscreens, you'll be very pleasantly surprised by how lovely this is in comparison. Nevertheless, there are elements I don't like, such as how slow it is to kind of absorb into the skin when you're applying and rubbing it in. Um, and also just that kind of slight greasy texture as you're applying it. Overall, this is good, but I think there are definitely better. Next up is the Perito Centella Green Level Safe Sun. <laughs> it's a long name. Uh, this one again, SPF 50, PA++++. So the Perito comes in at $11 for 60 milliliters, which is about 18 cents a milliliter. So this sunscreen only has the two filters, which is fewer than the other two I've talked about, and they are the Uvenol A and Uvenol T. Uvenol A is the uh, UVA protecting element of this formula and unlike Tinisorb, which is truly broad spectrum as I mentioned going up all the way to 400 nanometers of UV absorption, Uvenol A only goes up to max absorption of 354 nanometers. So there is an element of the UVA light which is the, the light that causes the most damage and premature aging for the skin that you're not going to be covered with this Purito. Again, for day-to-day -day use, if you are mostly indoors, perfectly fine. But if you do have a bit of a longer commute outdoors uh, where you are in the sun, 
consider that you know this one maybe is not the best option versus some of the others out there. With that mild warning out of the way, this is a lovely product. Um, the other ingredients in here give this SPF a nice skin moisturizing effect, like glycerin, hyaluronic acid, um, and other fatty acids. And then also this has niacinamide, which many love for all of the skincare benefits it provides. I have the scented version of this. I understand that since I, oops, <laughs> since I acquired the sunscreens, they have released an unscented version, which is great if you are very sensitive to scents. I personally really love the scent. It is a very green, clean feeling, and I know maybe I'm just being influenced by the packaging here, but it does smell really clean. Personally, I really love it. Uh, the texture on this is a little bit thicker versus some of the others like the Biore, which is, is nice. It doesn't drip and drop and doesn't feel goopy when you are applying it. It disappears really quickly into the skin and feels like it is almost instantly absorbed. Um, it's not just kind of sitting on the surface sloshing around as was the case in the Biore. Really great application process, no white cast, and honestly, it's lovely. The finish is a demi-matte finish after a couple of minutes, and I think it would work great with all skin types. I have combo skin, and it was great for my drier areas and my oilier, oilier areas. That's a weird word to say. One thing I did notice about this is that if you rub it too much, it actually kind of lathers up and it has the negative effect that you would want, which is the quick absorption. So if you, you know, remember not to kind of rub too much with this and just kind of less is more, it works really great and is quite instantly absorbed. Overall, I really do like this one. So the only downsides, of course, is that it doesn't have as broad coverage as some of the others. Next up is the Hadalabo UV White Gel. This one is $17 for roughly 90 grams or roughly 90 milliliters. Grams to milliliters, not a perfect conversion, but roughly there. Um, so that comes out to about 19 cents a milliliter. Bleh, milliliter. <laughs> so the filters are octanoxate, polysilicon 15, tinosorb S, uvenyl A+, and titanium dioxide, which is a mineral filter, but it's quite far down the list. So I would say for all effects and purposes, this is still a chemical sunscreen. Now for the SPF filters in here, this is a great list. It has, because of the tinosorb, the benefit of going all the way up to 400 nanometers of UV absorption. From the application and texture perspective, this one is a bit more watery. It's a watery gel texture, definitely a little wetter than the Perito and maybe similar to the Aqua Rich, maybe not quite as goopy as the watery or as the Aqua Rich. It does apply very similarly to the Aqua Rich, but takes maybe just a moment longer to go translucent. Even though overall, I would say this is actually a little bit faster absorbing than the Aqua Rich. It's basically kind of between the Biore and the Perito in terms of application enjoyment from my perspective. So even though this one does have alcohol as well in one of the, the ingredients lower down the list, um, I would say it's more moisturizing feeling than the Aqua Ridge, probably comparable to the Perito. It also features some great ingredients like hyaluronic acid as most Tata Labo products do. This one finishes to a nice demi matte finish, very similar to the Aqua Ridge and the Perito. And it is unscented, although there definitely is a noticeable scent because it's clear that they haven't tried to like add stuff to the formula to remove just the default scent that you have from some of the ingredients in here. So it just kind of smells like, I guess, like sunscreen. Not, not, you know, nothing too intense and it does go away quite quickly. Overall, this one is great. From an absolute enjoyment perspective, I enjoyed this almost as much as the Perito, but this one has greater protection than the Perito. So on that, on balance, I would say that this is probably one that I would, I would recommend a little bit more highly. And given that it has no fragrance, it's probably a little bit more uh, palatable to the wider audience. Quick intermission, guys. I do want to mention that I worked really hard on this video. So if you are enjoying what you're seeing, I hope you will hit that like button and also subscribe to this channel if you're not already because it really will help me and help others find this content. All right, next up is the Misha Daily. And, and the full name, I believe, is the All Around Safe Block Daily Sun. And this is also SPF 50, PA++++++, or five, four pluses, sorry. <laughs> this is 50 milliliters and it comes in at $11, so that's roughly 22 cents per milliliter. Uh, this one is a bit of a mixed, more mixed chemical and physical sunscreen. Um, it has quite a long list of ingredients. So they are homosalate, trolamine salicylate, titanium dioxide, juvenal A+, and tinosorb S. So across the board, all of these ingredients combined do definitely offer you the broad spectrum of coverage on par with the Hadalabo and Biore. In terms of how it is to use, this one is very prominently scented with a kind of nondescript sweet fruity scent. So definitely not my favorite. 
Uh, it is a thick cream texture and not the most pleasant to apply either. It is very comparable to many other mineral sunscreens actually, where you definitely feel kind of the residue, the drying mineral residue on your hands after application. Uh, it does leave a white cast upon initial application, but this goes away pretty much translucent after a couple of minutes and it dries to a very matte finish. So uh, maybe in that way, if you have dry skin, this one would definitely not be one uh, to recommend. As for the other ingredients, as mentioned, this product is heavily scented due to the loads of other extracts in there. The ingredients list is quite long, so while I didn't have any negative reaction, I would say to watch it if you have sensitive skin. Overall, the Misha is definitely not my fave. It is, you know, very similar to other kind of traditional American SPFs, but, uh, you know, part of the reason I like the Asian SPFs is because they're not like the traditional SPFs. Um, also, the scent, like I said, is kind of overwhelming. Definitely not something that I, I will reach for ever, actually. This is probably the only one of all the ones I'm gonna talk about today where I will actively be avoiding it just because the scent is too much for me. Some of you might like it, but I really don't like it. All right, next up is the Shiseido Senka UV Essence Sunblock. I mean, who knows if that's what the actual name is. All of this is in Japanese, as you can see on this packaging. This comes in at $11 for 50 milliliters, which is roughly 22 cents a milliliter. So the main ingredients in here for SPF are octanoxate, polysilicon 15, octocrylene, tinosorb S, uvenol A+, and avalbenzone. So these ingredients, some of them are quite familiar in American SPFs like octanoxate, octocrylene, and avobenzone. And then there are a few others like tinosorb S and, and uvenol A+, which are not FDA approved, so you wouldn't be able to find them. So combined, all of these really do provide, again, the broad spectrum all the way up to 400 nanometers, thanks to the tinosorb S. The other ingredients worth mentioning in this particular formula are the CoQ10, which is a, another anti-aging fave. Um, hyaluronic acid, and it's just overall a very nice moisturizing formula with glycerin and silicones. From the application standpoint, I really didn't expect to like this one. I'm not sure why, maybe it's just because the packaging was really unappealing to me, but I was really wrong. Um, this one goes on really nicely. It's super smooth, uh, it's absorbed almost instantly, leaves really no trace of greasiness, and the formula is a little bit thicker, so it's not super droopy and gloopy watery. It's, it's definitely more like a, a thicker, um, gel rather than the water watery gels and there's no sloshing around on the skin it's just pretty much instantly absorbed it really applies like a nice moisturizer and honestly it does double duty the finish is a little bit more matte than the others um, so it's, you know slightly more matte than the demi matte that we talked about with some of the others like the Pareto or the aqua rich but it again very nice moisturizing feel there is no added fragrance in this but there is very similar to the Hadalabo that kind of light scent that just smells like ingredients, sunscreen ingredients. So it's not the best scent for sure because it's not like a nice lovely fruity smell or whatever, but it's not really offensive. It's just kind of standard for sunscreens. Overall, I have to say I really loved this product. It has all the benefits of the super broad spectrum protection. It's great for sensitive skin. There doesn't seem to be anything in here that would really cause issue. Um, it has a nice mix of moisturizing ingredients. It is absorbed instantly, very, very pleasant to use, like a great lightweight moisturizer, to be quite honest. And it's really inexpensive. So this one is a definite winner in my book. Next up is the Claire's Soft Airy UV Essence SPF 50 PA++++ four pluses, <laughs> as all of them are. Um, 80 milliliters in this one for $23, which comes in at around 29 cents a milliliter. The filters in this particular formula are Uvenol A plus and Uvenol T. So this is the same as kind of what's in the Pareto, which means that it doesn't quite cover the full broad spectrum up to 400 nanometers. So again, kind of be aware about that. If you are, if you do have a longer exposure outdoors as part of your commute, for example, I probably would not recommend this one over some of the others, like the Senka that we just talked about, which I loved. <laughs> But again, perfectly fine for kind of day-to-day -day use, particularly if you are just sitting at home, working from home like I do. <laughs> okay, in terms of application, the texture of this is a very lightweight gel texture. It's not as watery as the Biore or the Hadalabo, but it's not quite as thick as the Senka. And again, the Senka is not thick, it's just com on a comparative scale, relative scale. This one is, I would say, the Claire's is kind of in between the Senka and the Hadalabo or Aqua Ridge. The application, though, is very similar to the Hadalabo and the Aqua Ridge, almost identical, really. Um, it basically goes on with the white coloring kind of quickly becoming translucent. 
It does take a moment to rub in and truly absorb into the skin versus the Perito or the Senka that are absorbed more instantly. Um, and it does dry with a demi matte finish similar to many of the others described. That said, it does feel a little drier to the touch and slightly less tacky than the others. So even though it's demi matte, maybe it's like slightly, slightly more matte. Overall, very nice, pleasant finish. This does have fragrance and um, it's a very lightweight fragrance thanks to some of the other extracts that are added in this formula. So I do enjoy this one. Again, be warned though if you are sensitive to fragrance. Overall, a very solid SPF. Um, very similar in texture and feel to the Halabo, which is great, but again, not as nice, in my opinion anyway, as the Perito, or better yet, the Shiseido Senka. <laughs> also, it does have less protection um, than some of the others. So this one, I, again, comparable in protection to the Perito, not as strong as the Senka. Last up on my mega review is the Make Prem UV Defense Me Blu-ray Sun Gel. This one comes in at 75 milliliters for about $30, so that is 40 cents a milliliter, definitely the most expensive of all of the ones I'm reviewing today. In terms of the filters in here, this one features octanoxate, homosalate, octosalate, and juvenile A+. So for the filters, we've talked about all of the other ones in here. Um, the only one that's new in this formula that's not in the other ones is octosalate, which is also found in many American SPF. And in terms of performance, this one is mostly, I would say, a UVB filter. It kind of absorbs to the max 320 nanometers. So the, the best UVA filter in here is the Uvenal A+, which absorbs up to 354 nanometers. But as you know, I mentioned before, UVA wavelength goes all the way up to 400 nanometers, so it doesn't cover, it's not truly full broad spectrum. Similar situation to the Claire's and the Perito. Other ingredients worth calling out in here are niacinamide and adenosine, which both have some nice skincare benefits. In terms of application and use, this is one of those that as soon as you put on, you're just kind of wowed by how instantly it disappears into the skin. Even if you're using that whole quarter teaspoon, it's gone almost instantly. I would say of everything reviewed today, this one is the most instant absorption, so super cosmetically elegant. The Senka comes in a close second to the Make Prem. So in that way, the Make Prem is definitely impressive and I understand why so many people love this product and was like highly, highly suggested as part of my overall reviews. I've used a different version of the Make Prem before, the one with the orange cap. I haven't used this blue cap one, so this one is new to me as well. So like I said, the application is awesome, but there is one more little negative thing about this, which is that the finish is the most shiny of all of the products that I reviewed today. If you have dry skin, you might really like this, but otherwise I prefer a more demi-matte finish. For example, with the finish on the Make Prem, I feel like I wouldn't feel comfortable just going out with that as without makeup on top because it is just so shiny. I kind of look like a grease ball. It does have some added fragrance and this one is kind of borderline. It's on the borderline for me. It's a little bit strong. It's very citrusy. So I do, and I generally do like citrus scents, but I, I can see that it is a bit strong and it might be on the borderline for many people who, who are more sensitive to fragrance. Overall, I do really enjoy the Make Prem. And you know, like I said, the fragrance is kind of borderline for me, but it's just on the side of, of pleasant. Um, it's just so impressive how instantly it absorbs. And I, but at the same time, I would need to cover this up with a little bit of makeup because of how shiny the finish is. Also, the sun protection offered is not as good as some of the others. So while I do love the beautiful packaging, convenient pump application, which none of the others have, I mean, come on guys. Um, I have to say that this is definitely inferior to the Senka. The Senka, I think overall, most well-rounded of everything that I've reviewed today. I am super surprised by this. So in summary, all things considered, Shiseido Senka, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I would recommend this without hesitation to just about anyone. I can't really think of any person that I would not recommend this to. It's definitely worth trying for everyone. Again, a beautiful application process, lightweight moisturizer feel, and almost instantly absorb. And bonus, it's really affordable. So this is, yeah, again, I was very surprised because I have seen this kind of floating around the ether for as long as I've seen the Aqua Rich, but I've just never made the purchase on this one. And honestly, that's because I was not into the packaging. So don't judge a book by its cover. All right, 
that is it for this video long ass video like i said i hope you played that on a faster speed if you watched the whole thing if you didn't you are a saint because that that was a lot to take in and a long time investment <laughs> so thank you guys for watching if you are interested in buying any of these i do recommend checking out the yes style um website and using the code that i provided logico joe for the extra discount so that's it thanks guys have a good one